and welcome back once again. Uh, it's been a long time since last time, uh, but we're back now with a new camera. Uh, since the old one we used to capture these games with uh, was actually one of my friends' camera, and he needed it back. So <laughs> big surprise! Yeah. So uh, we actually got a new one, and now we're hoping to at least manage to upload a new video every week, at least. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is from from one of our lo local ass tournaments. Uh, I think this was the third round. Yeah, uh, uh, this match is from the third round. It's between me and uh, actually the Swedish champion. He actually won that play mat uh, during our Swedish nationals. Yep. Um, and he he will be playing a uh, Montgomery Bladders, I think, Mono Greed uh, or Mono Banker. Uh, and he opens up with two erotic assassin. I I think Nicholas went first, starting with, by playing a resource and yeah. passing the turn, and then drawing a card at the end of Jocka's turn. Uh, and starting with the face down deception. No, I actually start with uh, face off. Uh, yeah, I... <laughs> he got a little confused there and wanted me to make up my mind, and well, it wasn't that hard. Yeah. So I discard a uh, uh, opportunistic pirate to make my thief toy, and that I play a seven seven. Yep. So suddenly those erotic assassins look very puny. Uh, For the look, time being. Yeah. And Yuki starts up with a typical banker play of playing a Dwarvish Grimokin and drawing two cards. Yeah. Quite a dandy little play. Yeah, it, it's it's a good card. Uh, I think it's a good card without Gilded Yurt. <laughs> I know some players, not mentioning any names, think otherwise. <laughs> uh, so he attacks with an Erotic Assassin, Nicholas blocks with the Thief Doyen, and the other Erotic Assassin swings through. Yeah. So he plays a post-mortem debenture, playing the erotic assassin once again. For free. Yep. I start with a face down, because uh, at this point I actually just want to reach six resources. I have some removal in my hand, actually, uh, drive-by boobing. Yep. Uh, a nice card. Yeah. Uh, very good against Monty. Yeah, exactly. Since... Uh, I actually played it since I know that Hampus actually plays a lot of, uh, what's his name? Uh, Hassan. Yeah, yeah, Hassan. Uh, so I just wanted it to be removed from game, but I noticed that my uh, drive-by boobing actually worked qu quite well in my deck. Yeah, since I want every card to get removed. Yep, and we had an alluring quicksand on Nicholas's... Thief Doyen, which I assume you're not too uncomfortable with. No, I want get... my six resources. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's fine by me. I didn't have my mistaken identity at this point. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Yoke here tries to play his uh, Gilded Yurt, and I play Drive by Booming on the Rotic yeah, Assassin, I... since I don't want it to be able to get Yurted when I remove it. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's gone. Uh... I have a question for you. Do, you. do you run Dry Gulch in this deck? Yes, uh, that's why I actually played uh, the Deception the first turn. Okay. Uh, so that I could play Dry Gulch if I wanted to. Yeah, because I, I generally think that Dry Gulch is a better card than... Uh, yeah. Uh, we dry by Boobing. Dry by Boobing is good in addition. Yes. Uh, exactly. And also good in, in decks that only run yeah. like two Deception or something. Yeah. So here we, we see the Thabashite Assailant, a very good card. He's now a uh, 2-2-4, I think. Yes, that's true. Yep. As something worth mentioning, uh, you can't really tell at this point since my starting resources are foiled, but I start with one Deception and one Elitism. Yeah. Uh, so we haven't seen any of my Elitism cards uh, yet, mostly because they are mostly for the late game. Uh, but I have a lot of other things to do with them as well. But they'll turn up sooner or later. Yep, and here we see Nicholas actually playing an opportunistic pirate to remove some of the cards from Yuki's discard pile. Mainly his alluring quicksand, yeah. so that the uh, Fabocyte actually can uh, kill uh, the erotic assassin later. Yep. 
Yeah, since the Thubbishite will be a 3-3-5, which is very good against Erotic Assassin, that's just a slow 3-3-2. Yeah. Uh, or rather, 3-3-3. Three, 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 three. And there we see the Dragouch. And here, I think he ponders if he wants to... Yurt it. Yeah, which I don't... Yeah, well, maybe it's good since it Personally, forces you to attack the... Yurt. The Yurt. Here, I don't really understand why he placed the uh, Delectable Boon on the Yurt and redirects the damage to the Opportunistic Pirate. Yeah, I think that is a misplay as well. Personally, I would have directed it to the Fabocyte since, well, it would have killed the Fabocyte and the uh, Erotic would have returned to play. Yeah, and you point out that the Erotic is actually removed from the game. Yes. Uh, so now I think you're both... Oh, right. I play a cock block uh, to prevent him from drawing a card. When was that? I didn't see it. You had it in your hand? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, cock block is actually a good card. I know you played it uh, a lot, and then as, uh, as Recollection Bazaar was announced to be banned, uh, I know... Hampus E1, or Hampus as we call him in Sweden, uh, started experimenting with uh, different builds with uh, Recollection Bazaar. To see what he could do. Yeah, and then he found out that Cockblock is actually a pretty good card. And here we see two Don't. additional po Cockblocks. <laughs> and we see some raging going on. <laughs> it sort of infuriated <laughs> yeah. Yoko since he no Well, as soon as he draws into his Dwarge Grimmalking or anything, his, well, deck has a lot of answers to my deck. Uh, yeah, but still, if he's not drawing any cards and you accelerate on resources, it's, it's good for you. Yeah. So here was in Nicholas play, uh, I got the gear, um, a very, very old school card. Uh, I think you're the only one in the world <laughs> who plays it. Um, but I like it. Yeah, and you fetch your hot pepper. Yeah. Uh, which is always good. Yeah, and for my deck, uh, which plays Doyen, I always want to have the opportunity during uh, round zero, when my opponent starts, uh, to play my uh, I Got the Gear to search for my Goliath. Yeah, so that I because l the Lutidium Goliath is uh, it's an 8 cost card. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's a gear, so you can search it. Um, if you play it with with uh, the Thief Dorian on turn two, you have a eight eight three guy, which is huge, and you have the Goliath in the discard, which can be fetched later by a Triple Magnet. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, which, which, which is the reason why Nicholas has gained the nick nickname Turbo Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> and here we see a martial artist, uh, always a good character, especially against Banker. Uh, when they're not running Hassani. Yeah. And now you're actually going to see the main change I've made to this deck since the first time I <laughs> built this deck when I started playing the spoils. Yeah, you mean beside all those shade cards? Yeah. And C2 that. cards? <laughs> beside that. Uh, since from the beginning it was more or less just martial arts, most, uh, martial artist and martial arts yeah. training. Uh I, I, I want to just uh, point out that Nicholas actually played the the martial artist and then attacked with the Thabashite assailant and then Sneaker attacked the martial artist into the battle party. Uh, Thereby uh, giving it hate. Yeah, effectively making it attack on the same turn he played it. Uh, a very nice play. Uh, always good. Even more nice when I get it with the fifth Dorian. That's an 8-8. Eight eight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here we have a Mao party. Sadly Her enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Mao party is a very, very good card. <laughs> and we see a lot of dead cards in Yuki's hand, actually. Uh, Although... Well, the yeah, Erotic Assassin is always good. Yeah. I don't think... All oh, right, yeah. And we have the Extravagant Contusion. Uh, Quite a cheap removal for the Thabocyte. Yeah, ex exactly. It, it's like one of the best removals for him. Mm. Since it's... It, yeah, it costs you one. Yeah. 
Sadly enough, I didn't have my mistaken identity in my hand, which yeah. <laughs> I could have redirected it to the erotic assassin. Yeah, such, it, a, such a fun card. <laughs> since it actually cost less. Yeah, exactly. Uh... And after that, uh, Yuki passes his turn, and he's all tapped out, so I know that if I can find removal, I think I can win the game. Since I have hot pepper. Yep. But I don't get any removal, so I know I can't win this turn, but I'm feeling confident that I can the next. Yeah, so you just leave the hot pepper on the the martial artist. Since it's not doing any harm, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to have there. And those, you know, four extra damage is... It's not... It's not needed... Right now, because he, he, he'll he still kill him in one turn. Yeah, exactly. Uh, regardless of if he's doing the damage this turn or, or the next turn. Yeah. So I assume this was uh, a cock block played with flip up. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, I'll admit I was too lazy to actually show that I paid for discarded a <laughs> card and then put the cock block face down again. Yeah. Uh, once again, it's, it's one of those times when. Yeah, it, it makes more sense when you're there. Uh, yeah, and and play the game, and you have the, and you you actually say what you're doing. It's like the thirteenth time you play the fired hands, uh, petty vengeance ability. You don't actually have to show the fired hand if you haven't messed with your resources in some way. You just yeah. say, yeah, I'll play fired hand. This card, this card. Yeah, it makes more sense. Then. Yeah, and here we see also my double martial arts trainee. Yeah, exactly. I was just looking because there's so much glare on the card, uh, so I, I had a hard time telling if it was a martial arts trainee or a martial artist. And here, so we have a pretty pretty nice field, uh, and here's another Mao party. <laughs> <laughs> more cards, more influence. Hopefully, um, I was sort of hoping that he wouldn't get uh, a Mao party since I know that. He'll most likely be able to get another uh, either a Rotic or a Montgomery Bladder site and play it. And then it will be uphill for me since I don't have any mass removal. Yeah. But what I do have uh, is something I believe I draw into uh, right this moment. Or if it is... <laughs> Checking the opponent's discard always a good a good tell when you're playing as a rogue. Yeah. It has its small tells. Yeah. Uh, but the card I mostly use to counter in these uh, sort of situations when my opponent will get more uh, characters on the field is... Well, not... Tripole Magnet, oh, but it helps. Well, the Tripole Magnet here is actually huge. Um, Which gives me opportunity to attack quite a few times. Yeah. With... And also, everything survives... Uh, well, not everything, but uh, most things can kill the erotics. The thing is, his prop condemner uh, prevents me from attacking with the last uh, trainee. Yep. Since I know it's going to get killed, but I still want to attack. Yeah, and here we see Yuki blocking with the, the blather side. Which uh, actually surprised me. It doesn't surprise me, actually. The blather side is actually worthless. He has no characters in his discard pile that he can uh, pick up. And even if he, he yurts it out... Uh, it's going to survive then. Yeah. yeah, it's either going to survive or it's going to be removed from the game, which... Well, at this point, you'd rather have. Uh... Oh, he didn't yurt it out, actually. Nope. Uh, I was pretty sure he was going to. I was <laughs> as well. Uh, I was actually prepared to uh, use Cockblock on it, but I don't want to discard the cards I have in my hand for Cockblock. And... Yeah, because you have the opportunistic pirate, which is always good. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure what the other card was there. So you attacked with uh, the martial arts trainee with the. Uh... The hot pepper. I think blocking it with the property condemner might have been a good thing because then you can't use the yeah I thought so as the well spit out ability uh, since he would have died yeah uh, since the property condemner has four speed 
uh, and he would have taken two, two damage. Uh, but he opts to not do that. Yeah. And you swing with the last guy. So here we'll see if he blocks. Yeah, which he does. Uh, personally, I also think he should have blocked since he wants my characters gone since he can't pick them with removal. Yep. The um, thing is, I just wanted the character to be gone. I know I have field control, and I know that any time he now tries to recur anything from his discard pile, I play the opportunistic pirate, yeah, which exactly. we'll see at this moment. And opportunistic pirate. So those two cards, and I'm guessing... The two other characters he has in his yeah, discard pile. Exactly. <laughs> At this point, I... Do you run cards like Peculate or Catastrophic Betrayal? I don't actually play any of those, so I'm fine with just removing the entire discard pile. And there he scoops. Yeah. Uh, but I drew into... Uh, oh, delicious... Uh, <laughs> strawberries. <laughs> yeah. So even if he would have gotten field control, uh, I still could have played uh, that and just depleted all his characters and then swung for game. Yeah, exactly. Except Erotic Assassin, but I think he had four Erotic Assassins removed from the game, so yeah. they were, well, not really a threat. No. But that's that. Yep. Until next time. Have fun, play spoils. Yes.